Good afternoon, everybody, or evening. I don't know. I don't judge you on your time zone. That's not how I roll. Welcome to Hacking Gourmet. I'm Fred Rui. I'm the meterator. Do you know it took me like 15 weeks to say meteor, meterator? See, now I went to say it and I didn't say it right. So apparently, 20, maybe another 15 weeks, I'll get it right. But uh, thanks for joining us, Hacking Gourmet. Grilling Nemo is our theme. So uh, I don't think you have to be like a trivia expert at your local pub, which is probably not open right now anyway, uh, to know what Grilling Nemo is about. So we're probably doing some seafood. We ask at this time, though, is support a growth, you know, sh share the live feed on Facebook if that's where you're watching. You know, spread the love a little bit. This helps reach larger audiences, uh, you know, helps pay the bills. Not really, because <laughs> basically we are so in the weeds on actually making any money off the show. We, uh, that's why our budget is so bad. It all goes towards food. But hey, that's okay. Uh, Instagram, Hacking Gourmet, and subscribe to us on YouTube, because um, most people are on Facebook Live. But YouTube's still a thing, right? So, uh, but this show is not about me, despite anything that you may see me in and normally see me in, this isn't about me. This has nothing to do with me. This has to do with Brian and Carney and welcome to the show, Brian and Carney. Wow. You said me first. I know. Yeah. Usually Carney would take that over and say, it's all about me. Well, well that's yeah, obvious. Cause, cause he's going to take it over anyway. So I just figured right. I'd get the top billing right out of the gate to you. So, um, so what? So I, I'm still I'm I don't know about you guys. Well, I know where you guys are because you know, Brian, you're obviously in your kitchen. Which, by the way, we love the new camera angle. Uh, yes. I see the saran wrap there. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on the show. Jonathan, you're doing the old standby. Finally, back outside. So obviously, you're back up north. You've yep. uh, you've got you got not a down south. So tell us uh, what's the weather up there? Are, I know we can't eat fiddleheads because they're poisonous right now. We've nope. covered that in other episodes. So so I got back on Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday evening, I flew into Portland, Maine. And I had dinner at one of my favorite restaurants called Scales, which inspired uh, Grilling Nemo. It's a seafood restaurant. So I was like, we had to do a seafood episode. Um, but, yeah, I got back up here. I'm, I'm, I'm outside. It's, uh, of course, it's Monday here in Maine, so it was scheduled to rain. Uh, I pulled the trigger with an executive decision and decided not to cook out of the garage. Um, and as of so far, it's paid off. And we do, have, uh, we do have the Hills live here today. Wade Hill and his bride, Kathy are live in the studio audience uh, here in Maine. So Wait. it's an exciting day. Could you could you have not presented that as the hills are alive and then launched into a song? Could you <laughs> not just <laughs> twisted those words over? <laughs> oh, man, see? Hey, maybe uh, at the end. We missed an opportunity there. Brian, you are obviously at home in Texas. Tell us what's going on there. Man, we're hoping that this heat wave is about done and that... Uh, our neighbors south down in Houston aren't going about get about to get uh, hit by that hurricane. So fingers yeah. crossed some of the rain to op up here, but that it's just, you know very uh, subtle down there. Well, and I've been down to Houston, and I know you have uh, when they've been hit with floods. And um, it's not a city. I don't know if it just doesn't get enough news, but I have been there through some hellacious like floods, like serious, serious stuff there. Yeah. Yeah. And now, how, far, how far are they from the coast, though? They're like a little ways away. No, they're right on the coast. But I mean, I mean, like, like they're not like, like, they're not like Tampa on the coast, though. No, it's I mean, slightly, it's slightly inland. Shipping they got shipping I channels. mean, do they? Yeah. I mean, they just get they get pummeled. I mean, when they when they they've had so many bad rains. I can't remember. So you guys had bad rain about what was it, about four years ago? Was just the. I mean, I remember hearing the stat. And the amount of rain you got within 30 days could put the entire state of Texas under one foot of water or something like that. And I that mean, if you, think, right if you think about that. Three years. Yeah, that, yeah, that's crazy. Absolutely crazy. 
So uh, we're coming up. Last week we had Planet of the Apps. So that was super cool. Uh, I, so I kind of got, we were doing charcuterie stuff all week long here up at the lake because, um, you know, we were in a, kind of an app mode. Uh, I'm going to cook some salmon later tonight because, um, well, I'm in Pacific Northwest. So, I mean, now's the time to get fresh sockeye salmon, uh, you know, all that kind of thing. Copper River's not in season right now, which is my favorite. I would do it on the show, but quite honestly, and, and we talked about this earlier, uh, salmon is the most boring thing. I throw it on the grill. It takes me less than five minutes. So I throw it on skin side down because it's well protected that way. Burnt, you know, get it going. As soon as I start seeing it kind of change color a little bit, I flip it over and then you can peel the skin off of the spatula because it's been burned kind of crispy. And then you flip it over one more time. But literally, you, you know, if I ever, if that ever came out medium, I think my wife would disown me at that point because it's got to be medium rare. You do not overcook seafood, which is what we're going to be watching both of you today. But you guys do not overcook any seafood. We're well, trying not to. I'm going to, I'm going to so do Brian's my best back- at it. It's very easy to do. It's very easy to overcook. See if it's easy to overcook anything, honestly, uh, chicken, fish, steak's kind of tough because you can just pretend like if you overcooked, it's like, Oh, I intended to cook it medium. Well, um, but yeah, oh, fish is pretty, well, da- Dan, Danny would be happy. Danny would be happy. Let's be honest about that. He's a medium. Well, kind of guy and a medium. Well, listener there, but, uh, <laughs> I, dis- I disagree on the chicken though. And I'm going to disagree and bring up pork because you can cook those low and give yourself a bigger window. But if you walk away from seafood on the grill, literally in a minute it can be overcooked. Mm-hmm. By the way, I didn't say I'm going to overcook it. I just said it's easy for other people. I think you were just putting <laughs> some excuses out there as well. I, but we wouldn't know anyway. You just, you just even go, yeah, perfect medium rare. We wouldn't perfect, know. Perfect medium rare every time. So it's kind I, of weird being back up here. When I was down in Miami, I... I uh, Everything's closed down there still. It's kind of like what was going on up here in Maine at the beginning of the coronavirus situation. So there wasn't a whole lot to do other than go from my office to my apartment. Um, and in my, my condo unit, the, um, the pools are closed. The gym's closed. There's no indoor dining. So who wants to dine outside at like 105 degrees? So I was in a state of depression. So to get myself out of that depression, I cooked A5 beef, like religiously, and a Pimone Ibirico and little caviar stuff. So I had a really good time, but uh, when I got back to Maine, it was refreshing. And uh, you can see the theme this week. I said it's fish and uh, something a little healthier to counteract uh, the negative effects that I had. But A5 is incredible, incredible beef. It's the best I've ever had. Every cut I've had was was fantastic. My favorite was the A5 picanha. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, so we'll Ooh. be posting some of that online when we feature some A5 stuff in the future. But, but it was a great time when I was down there on a culinary side. Let me well, hey, John, and you me just toss something real quick. Yeah. So I, I cooked some Wagyu, some Australian Wagyu meat, and it, it, it kind of had the funk that it was aged for 50 days, but it literally tasted like I had boiled it in butter. The, the flavor of butter was insane. So I was wondering what the, if the A5 had that similar texture and that taste to it i i would it, it does it does it, it doesn't remind me of the dry aged um just because it's not funky but it, the buttery it's definitely it's definitely a delicacy um and it's really you know it was fantastic because once you have a flavor another thing you do with it with the, with the umami is which is that's another you know a taste recognition um is you you can you put like i used white truffle salt and then i'd also dip it slightly in um in soy sauce, which was absolutely phenomenal. It was a completely different experience with the soy sauce than without. Um, so I had a lot of fun with it. It was good. Um, for those that don't know what Wagyu means, Wagyu means Japanese cattle. Um, essentially, it's this Japanese, the Japanese term for Japanese cattle. So that's what Wagyu means. Um, but A5 is the highest grade uh, that you can get. Uh, some people have, they may have heard recently and seen things around where they like olive Wagyu, uh, Wagyu. Uh, what they do is they just the cows just essentially eat olives at a certain age, uh, so it does kind of change the flavor profile. Same way like wine and cigars, where wherever it's grown, uh, changes the flavor. It's like the terroir uh, of the cow, but all, A5 is the highest rating. I've been so, uh, eating A- A6 Wagyu up here. Uh, <laughs> it's not out to where you are yet. Uh, it's it's a higher level. I don't want to. I don't really want to. You know, quick call that and kind of let you know what's going on there. So let's talk about what everybody's cooking this week. So Brian, what are you cooking this week? All right. So I'm cooking uh, as usual for this show that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. I, 
I cook a lot of things for the very first time. So I'm going to do, I'm going to cook some uh, sea scallops, not bay scallops, some sea scallops. I'm going to sear them, put a little uh, garlic, uh, chili, sesame oil on top. Uh, I'm going to butter, butter poach shrimp for the very first time. And I'm using 810 shrimp, these massive, massive shrimp. I'm going to butter poach them and put them on a bed of polenta. And then I'm going to beer batter some cod and make the classic San Diego fish taco with a uh, hatched chili sour cream sauce and a uh, little radicchio sriracha and a little lime juice on top. Okay, when I, I have to ask this, and I know we're going to get there anyway. When you say butter poach, are you literally going to poach it just in butter? Butter. Oh, my man. So oh. I've got a little bit of water in there to keep the butter from breaking from the solids uh, – separating from the fat but it's gonna be cooked in butter uh, my cholesterol just went up four points to 122 okay. coming back really quick yeah 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 i just gained i just gained a pound thanks a lot off the program so very good so let's let's jump over to uh carney and uh kind of review with the ingredients of what uh carney's cooking this week so I'm doing something a little simple this week. It's going to be a nice, real flavorful dish. Uh, but I'm doing a cigar box cedar haddock. What that means is I have um, some cigar boxes that I'm using as cedar plugs. Um, so the ones that the cigar box I'm using is from a cigar called the Factory Press 2. It's a big, huge crate. Um, so I have two flat cedar panels, and then I have a little separating panel. Uh, so I'm doing that with... Um, Haddock. I'm going to be using haddock, a real popular fish in the Northeast. It's a white fish, and I'll be making an aioli with that, and I'll be doing uh, light mayo, lemon, olive oil, sour cream, garlic, some chives, a little mustard. I've got shallots, dill, truffle salt, pepper, and paprika going on top of the haddock. We will have the grill cam on here, so we'll get to see the uh, fish go on top of the grill with the cedar plank and how we're doing that. And then I'll have a potato fiesta. What potato fiesta is, I'm doing some baked russet potatoes, and those are uh, wrapped in uh, tin foil, aluminum foil. And there are, the potatoes, before they were wrapped in aluminum foil, are wrapped in prosciutto. And I have truffle salt in there and olive oil. Uh, so those are going to bake off to the side. I already have those on. They're going to bake most of the show. Um, I was going to do asparagus, but apparently I didn't buy any asparagus, so we're not going to be doing any asparagus today. Uh, but we've got uh, olive oil, red bell pepper. I'm using my favorite uh, Hawaiian pepper there, that uh, Aloha pepper, which is a red and yellow uh, orange pepper combined. Uh, Vidalia onion, truffle salt, pepper, garlic, lemon juice. Um, and we're, instead of lemongrass, since we don't have that in Maine, uh, we're going to be using a little uh, cilantro over the top of that. So potato fiesta, we're going to roast these potatoes, bake them on the, uh, right on the fire here. Um, and then we're going to chop those up and make like a little potato fiesta, uh, salad thing type on the side. So, uh, that'll be the side dish there, but yeah, cedar box salmon with fiesta potatoes. I'm kind of digging the cedar box salmon. That sounds kind of cool. Yeah, or cigar so, box. How about look, cigar box salmon? So if you look on the back here, these are the panels. So I've got the fish sitting on the panels. Um, right underneath here is a little tray, which is what they use to actually box press the cigars. So I can show you that. Um, so this is the little tray here. This is where the box press would go. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this. I'm going to go back to the grill cam here real quick. Just so you can see here. I'm going to set this directly on the coals. Um, and I have the grill grates on the top of it just to kind of give it a little bit of separation. But I'll put this box press tool right here on top and then I'll put the uh, cedar planks right on top of that. Uh, so it should be a really unique way to cook it. Um, I haven't cooked cedar plank salmon this way before, uh, so it should be pretty fun. Did you pre-soak the uh, cedar and the and that box press mold there? I did. I soaked them for about three yeah. hours, and uh, so these yeah, are drenched okay. wet. And that's one thing you definitely want to do is you want to soak that uh, so they don't catch on fire. Yeah, yeah, outstanding. Well, if you didn't catch uh, Carney's shirt there, he's got a wood butcher shirt, which we gave him a lot of hassle because Brian and I do not have wood butcher shirts, although we do have some of the awesome cutting boards. But they're one of our sponsors, Wood Butcher Maine. They've got some durable, attractive wood uh, boards. Uh, they've got uh, they've got all sorts. They've got butcher blocks, cutting boards, coasters, grill grate cleaners, which we were all surprised by. Uh, Hacking Gourmet, our favorite really is the Red Oak Cigar Ashtray 
and cocktail coaster. As, as you know, for me, it's holding snacks also. But uh, Wood Butcher, Maine, has a passion for food. The Pine Tree State, which we learned last, last week, was Maine. And craftsmanship of the highest quality. So you can go to woodbutchermaine.com to kind of check out their current collection. And they're actually starting to take off like wildfire. So uh, I'm glad I've already got some of my Wood Butcher accoutrements. I just wanted to work that word in there because that just seems like something that a meteorator should work in is accoutrements. See, I got to work it in twice now. for you. I know, right? If we're following along at home, there should be like some sort of like, you know, point thing there. It'll, we're not even doing points anymore since we have the new show. Maybe we should bring the points back. Yeah. But uh, so let's talk about. So um, for me, I've been I've been up here. I know this is where we, you know, what have I been doing? I haven't traveled. I'm actually we just booked another five weeks on the lake because it's really good weather and we're enjoying it. And uh, then I'm going to head out. And uh, as far as the show is concerned, I'm planning on ending up in Brian's kitchen or backyard by mid-October so we can do an episode there where I actually get to eat some of this food other than my own and try somebody else's. So I'm super looking forward to that. No pressure, Brian. Uh, You know, you might bring out something really good at that point. But, uh, you know, I I don't think that's – I think that's when you do over five ingredients. Uh, Carney, as everybody knows, we've limited them to under 50 ingredients at this point uh, just to make, you know, the show go a little bit easier. And we saw how well that worked last time because he still took forever to finish. Yeah, how did I don't understand last week? And he cooked like lettuce. That's all he did. Last week, all I, sorry, last week, the last show, all I cooked was actual lettuce. Nothing else on there got cooked and it took me forever. I don't understand what happened. Yeah, I'm not sure how that went down. I really don't. I'm not, uh, but we're, we're enjoying it up here. Uh, I, I is to be in a, what's nice about being in different part of the country is you have access to foods you don't normally have access to. So I'm up here like snake river, uh, snake river canyons up here, which is a big meat producer, which has got some really, really good stuff. Um, and then, uh, obviously salmon, obviously seafood up here. Dungeness crab can still get that. That's in season like five ninety nine a pound. So we're just going to make it rain Dungeness crab up here while we're up here. Um, so that's it. I'm, I'm lazy. Obviously you can tell that Fred's in vacation mode, uh, although I'm still working up here, but this is definitely a lot more casual. I'm not even running the show. Jonathan is still running the show. Uh, I think we should just keep it this way. I think he's doing a hell of a job. You know, it's serious since we did the computer upgrade. I mean, it's like a different world right now. Everything's going great. Um, you know, it's, it's very smooth. We've got some new technology here. So yeah, for now we'll keep it this way. So we'll see what happens. All so, right, so I, we're look, checking out the grill cam. So, Fred, this is a perfect timing, I think, to uh, to check out the grill cam. And then before we are done with the grill cam, I think we ought to bring up, uh, potentially bring up the meme of the week, since I didn't put anything on there. Um, I forgot it on the show notes. But we do have a new segment, and of course a new segment I forgot. But at grill cam, I just got the potatoes here, as you can see, wrapped in aluminum foil. I picked smaller russets so they could cook in the shorter time frame that we have here. I wrapped them in prosciutto. I said I put truffle salt on there and olive oil. Uh, so that's all I have on there right now. But if you look over here at my mise en place, I've got shallots, uh, which I put on top of the fish. Uh, so on top of the fish, we've got we've got dill. We've got shallots on top. We put salt. Uh, we have a little bit of tricolor peppercorn, and then I uh, used a mandolin here to uh, to slice up some lemons. And each one of these fish is going to get a couple and a few pieces of lemon on top. Um, so we're going to do that. So this is how this is going to go on. Uh, but we'll put that on here. As I said, it's not going to take more than probably five to ten minutes max to cook that. So we'll probably put it on in about 20 minutes. Uh, but I do have it prepped up over here, so that's what I'll be doing off to the side. Uh, just putting the lemon on top there. Uh, so it should be a really nice dish. I'm actually looking forward to this. It's a, I've been trying to eat a little healthier lately. Uh, so this is right up my alley. Um, so it should be a really refreshing meal. Wait, so what? what's a mandolin? I thought that was like a small guitar. <laughs> a mandolin? So a mandolin is a device... Uh, as, a, as essentially a handheld slicer. It's very, very thin. It's very, very sharp. It's actually one of the top two items in a kitchen that cause hospital visits because uh, it's incredibly sharp. But I have a very inexpensive mandolin that I use up here. Um, and essentially what it does is it allows you to slice in different, uh, different measurements. Uh, these are about like a tenth of an inch. Um, and then you can go very, very oh, thin. Okay. Yep, All so you right. go very, very thin. Yeah. Um, so I used that mandolin when we did the potato chips on the hot dog episode. Um, so that was cool. Uh, but a, a unique thing, um, you know, we talked about wood butcher 
uh, as we get towards the end of the show, we do have a Hacking Gourmet and Cigar event coming up in September. This will be on September 24th, uh, but we can talk more about it at the end of the show. But we are uh, starting to expand on some of the things that we're doing, um, and uh, there has been growth there. So thank you for, for supporting us through these times as we grow with that and as we have new viewers and new participants. Uh, we hope that we continue to put together a fun show. Yep, and the word of the day is mandolin. Yeah. Just remember that, remember that password. Oh, by the way, that oh. is, that is that is a high probability accident item in the kitchen. Uh, I didn't know they thought that's what it's called. Behind avocado accidents, by the way, which apparently is is super big in emergency room uh, kitchen accidents. So this is a great time for meme of the day. So we're gonna throw this up. The uh, this will be the meme of the week. Don't really need that from my assistant, but she's helpful, so that's nice. Uh, the mandolin is here. So if anybody needs to see what a mandolin looks like, there you go. Yeah, there. Oh, yeah. I've lost chunks of thumbs off those. Oh, yeah. So the meme of the week. Hamburger helper only works if the hamburger is ready to accept that it needs help. That's true. That's a true story. We should, here's, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make an executive decision. Not that, that uh, any of us are executives in this scenario. I would like to have between now and the next show, the viewers submit what they think the meme of the week should be and post it on our page or send it to us and we'll post it on our page. However, that's going to work. And if we pick your meme of the week, uh, and if, mul if some people submit like multiple, we'll have to draw, say, Hey, these five guys did it. We'll draw, draw a name out of the five and we'll give them some sort of prize for the meme of the week for the hack for, for the hacking gourmet meme of the week. What do you guys think? hundred percent, hundred percent. I just realized how little I have to actually cook today and prepare. Um, so this is a perfect example of when you set yourself up for success. Um, it's very smooth and very easy. Last week I only cooked lettuce and that took me more effort and more time. Uh, than this did today where I'm actually cooking everything. But uh, having everything set up beforehand certainly helps. But the next thing I'm going to be making is going to be the uh, aioli that I have here. So uh, my aioli is going to consist of sour cream, uh, light mayonnaise. I use the egg white mayonnaise on this one. This would be good. I'm going to be putting in um, a little bit of chive in there, some chives. And we're going to be putting in some garlic. And then um, we'll be throwing in a little bit of mustard and some salt and pepper. And we'll call that a nice little aioli. And I do have olive oil that we'll be putting in that as well. Uh, so that'll be the next thing that I prepare. And then we're going to, the la very last thing I'm going to be doing is sauteing the peppers, the onions with garlic. Um, and uh, then we'll be cutting up those potatoes as we get towards the end. So we're in pretty good shape right now. I'm about 70% of the way done. Nice. Got a new record going on here. By the way, speaking of mayonnaise, and I want to bring this up. So this is a downside to what I found here. I've been in two stores up here, and I went to buy mayonnaise, and they don't have Duke's mayonnaise, which, by the way, I think is the best mayonnaise if you're not going to make it yourself. You're just going to buy a jar of mayonnaise, and I think Duke's is phenomenal. Uh, not not available up here, or at least not in the two stores I've been in so far. Very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. So before I throw it over to Brian, let me talk about uh, McGee Smoked Meats. Uh, not really McGee Smoked Meats. I'm not actually going to talk about crown heads because, you know, but it, it, McGee's kind of like squirreled his way into equal billing on this, which we haven't quite figured out yet. But crown heads bringing you the finest premium cigars and smoked meat experiences across the southwestern USA, which is, you know, Brian's territory. Crown Heads is committed to premium cigar, uh, producing cigars and artisanal quality that are defined by a combination of excellence, flavor, balance, consistency. Uh, as you guys know, and I've talked about on the show, I'm a huge flavor guy as far as the cigars. I don't really care where they end up strength. That's the thing I go to. And uh, really everything in that line, I'm super, super happy with from a flavor standpoint. So, Brian, we're going to throw it over to you. And what's, what are you working on right now? All right. So the butter is almost completely melted. I've got the pan heating up for the scallops with butter and uh, olive oil to keep the butter from burning. And I'm about to use the, the Kitchen Evil, put a little saran wrap over this polenta and put it in the microwave. And I just hope I can do it within the time frames because saran wrap is such a bitch to use. I hate saran wrap. We talked about that before the show. I mentioned it in my book, So Long and Thanks for All the Bacon. I think it is one of the most evil uh, kitchen accessories ever invented. Uh, even just to start the roll is a pain. It only sticks to itself. 
Um, it is, it is, Brian's going to put on a clinic right now on how to do it. Actually, you did pretty good there, Brian. I would have actually, it'd be like the third or fourth sheet. I actually would have got away with it. Well, don't, don't, I still got one more to go. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. I hate, I hate Saran Wrap of the Passion. It's brutal. But like you said, you, you, so right now it's perfect. Right now we're, we're good. Yeah. Until you start losing a little piece of it. Do that. And then the roll gets the roll gets smaller and smaller as it starts tapering off, and then you have smaller and smaller pieces, and then you have to throw it away. Right. So uh, what's everybody Spin smoking? Fast and throw things Brian, what are you? Oh, you're not smoking inside today. Yes, I am. Uh, what are you smoking? Crown Heads Mel DS, which hopefully next week they hit the warehouse and we start shipping. Oh, can't wait! Can't wait. Jonathan, I'm going to I'm going to ignore the fact that it looks like you're wearing Crocs and hope that you've got an awesome cigar to pull you out of that uh, demographic for me. I am wearing Crocs. God bless America. Oh. Um, oh. I'm smoking the La Florida Minicana Reserva Especial uh, Super Corona. It's a seven by 60 big, big ring gauge cigar today. Um, it, delicious. It was the second line of cigars that LFD made back in the early 90s. Um, medium, medium full, bo uh, sorry, medium bodied. Now it's fuller bodied than it used to be about four or five years ago. It went through kind of a rebranding, um, but uses Ecuadorian Corojo wrapper, Dominican binder and filler. Um, and this is very similar to our Andalusian bull. Uh, so if you're looking for Andalusian bull, uh, similarities, this is a good one, but that's what I'm smoking today. So yeah, I mean, the Crocs are great, man. This is like a big culinary thing. Oh, I'm not, I'm not a Crocs person at all. Not happening. Not happening. So uh, I'm, I don't know what I'm smoking. I, uh, I actually had to have, I severely under, well, one, I'm staying on the road a little bit longer than I thought it would, but I also severely underestimated my cigar consumption on the road, which you'd think by now I would have pretty well nailed. Um, and uh, so I had to have a drop shipment set to me for the, from the warehouse. And uh, in that drop shipment were some bundles of stuff that I don't know, in addition to everything else that I told them. So I'm smoking something that's actually very good. I think it was a test blend or a pre-banded cigar or whatever, but I'm enjoying it uh, right now. So I've been pretty happy about that. Man, I'm getting um, hammered on these so Crocs here. I got Crocs and socks. Man, I'm getting destroyed in here. And then like the, the egg white uh, mayonnaise got a lot of attention as well. Um, I don't know. I didn't make it. They were, Hannaford was out of, uh, was out of egg, was out of the light mayonnaise that I use for a lot of my bases and my sauces. So uh, they had egg white mayonnaise. I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. We'll so out. Brian, we've got a pr we've got a pro tip here from Mike Carney. Says uh, Saran Wrap. He says get the commercial cling film, very user friendly. Call Cisco. Use it exclusively for years. Uh, I'm gonna have to look that up. I'm gonna look that up. Matt has uh, actually. I think that's a Dr. Seuss book, Max. Uh, Matt, it's uh, Crocs and socks. I think that's a pretty much uh, 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 that that that's a Dr. Seuss thing. Are you wearing socks with the Crocs, by the way? Absolutely. I didn't even catch. I didn't. Oh, wow. Why don't you just move to Florida full time now? <laughs> Are they black socks? No, they're I red can't socks see on my camera. You, oh, you got okay. red, socks. red socks. I can put it in the grill okay. cam here. Here we go. No, really not. Oh, no, 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 we don't. Uh, Let the record me... show. He volunteered that. We did yeah. not. Ask. Nope. Don't make me pull the show over. I don't have a lot of authority here, but I know that's one thing I'm allowed to do. So uh, let's let's do this while we have a pause. Let, let's do the top five list. By the way, uh, we do the top five list while we're here, and um, so as usual, we uh, you know figured out the top five list about five minutes before the show started. No, I don't think it was quite that bad because we had to make a graphic for it. But a lot of argument when we had uh, a lot of discussion since it was Finding uh, Nemo or or Flying Nemo or Cooking Nemo. What is our show called? Grilling Nemo. Grilling Nemo. Okay. All right. All right. Not, not safe for children. We should have NC-14 that so we don't, you know, send the wrong message to the kids out there. But uh, we, we, we chose our top So you could, as usual, in the comments, you're allowed to pick who had the best list of top fish. We had an argument whether it was cooking or catching or whatever it was. We'll just let everybody decide on their own list. But uh, Carney has bluefin tuna. Uh, I'm trying to read here. Is that, uh, what is that? How much? Hamachi. Hamachi, yellowtail. Oh, yellowtail. Okay. Well, why didn't you say yellowtail? You got to be because it's, it's called hamachi. Well, it's also called yellowtail. 
Red Snapper, Haddock, and Anchovy. Anchovy, the sleeper alert. I never would have picked that one. That's an interesting. Yeah, when I picked Anchovy, that was for you, Fred. I knew you were going to appreciate that one. I I like it because it's a key ingredient of people that just don't recognize. And people that are afraid of Anchovy are probably just misusing it. Or they they like Anchovy and they don't know it's in a bunch of things that they already have. Uh, Brian's top fish were Mahi Mahi. Bluefin tuna, walleye, wahoo, and swordfish. Was wahoo for cooking or catching, Brian? Both. Both. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Uh, I went Same with my, walleye. All right. My top fish were ahi tuna, rainbow trout, mahi-mahi, copper river salmon, and wanda for the win. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sleeper right there. Yep. No one saw that coming. Just, just out of I respect, actually, I did add for the win on there, as you requested. I didn't want to do it, but I... But I put it on there. Well, that was actually just for you guys, because when we create our list, there's always our internal competition. So I thought of that right away, and I like had to, in a real hurry, fire that off before anybody else picked Wanda. So that's the uh, – uh, Matt says no walleye, no perch. You know, perch actually probably should have made my list. I'm a Wisconsin boy. Uh, that's where I'm from. I missed fish, uh, f- uh, fish fries on Friday. Uh, that would have been good. Not a lot of freshwater love. You're right, Matt. Not a lot of uh, – uh, Freshwater love. Cole, no chicken of the sea. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we'll go to can of tuna. We'd be good to go. Uh, Cobia, yeah, Ron says Cobia. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a solid one. That's a good one. Uh, and Ron, Ron's a big fisherman, I think. I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's the uh, real deal. Yeah, I mean, like, he actually, like, can really catch fish. We, we go to the store. Uh, Brian, you do some fishing, though. You guys have done several outings oh, on that. Yeah. Grew up freshwater fishing in about seven years ago started uh deep sea fishing i love fish i only like fishing if i'm catching fish my favorite fishing experience is i went to alaska for salmon and that was probably my best fishing trip uh found a caught a 28 pound king salmon and then about another 12 silver salmon so that was that's kind of but I, I i the guys that can sit out there all day and they don't catch anything and they're still having fun that's not me uh no who likes the fish to go fishing but not actually fish is Island Jim. He just wants to smoke cigars and drink beer. He could care less if the fish are biting. Well, Jim, Jim, Jim's an interesting cat. I mean, you know, Jim's just okay with the cigars and beer. It doesn't really matter what else is going on. By the way, Jim just bought a trailer like mine, the off-road trailer. He got his from Borsure, which is the company that made the trailer. So my company that I bought mine from, they shut down. And the employees said, screw this, we're making our own company. And they did, so they started making trailers. So I saw Jim pick his up. I think it was today or yesterday. He sent me a text. So um, he's, he's looked for him out on the road. Uh, right now he's going nowhere near water. But uh, he's going to have fun with that uh, camper. Fred, real quick, if you look at the butter, you need to see how quickly those shrimp are cooking. Uh, uh, that, is, that is so good. Should I should I send you my list of what I want you to cook for the show when I get there, or you just want to just you know figure it out for yourself? What's that? Should I send you a list of what my requests are for you to cook? When yeah, I get there? because I figure it's going to be some kind of dry aged wagyu tomahawk. So. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. I did a tomahawk last week again, and uh, I saved the bone because the neighbor brings his dog on the weekend, which is a giant Great Dane. And I gave I gave him the bone, and he was my friend for quite a while at that point. <laughs> I bet. So my aioli's done. You can see here, the yellow tinge comes from the mustard, but we put, as I said, that we did the light mayo, sour cream, mustard, truffle salt, chives, and garlic, and uh, lemon juice and olive oil. So really nice. And that'll kind of get slopped on the top. So you can kind of mix it in when you want. It's it's honestly an aioli. This is going to be kind of like a, a modified tartar sauce. Oh, okay. Looks good. Fred, what are you smoking? That was the question. Nobody that didn't nobody asked you a question. Um, I answered that, and apparently you were not paying attention. You were oh. so uh, engaged in there. I had talked about getting some cigars dropped. And oh, yeah. uh, there were some bundles of something I didn't know that I think was a test blend, uh, but I'm enjoying it. I actually think it's a Findolos Mundos uh, pre, pre-banded, pre um, but they were probably for the show. Uh, they just, much like Indiana Jones, somebody just found some of my cigars in a warehouse 
Uh, and they have the coveted C276, which is probably the best cigar I ever blended. So I'll be getting some of those. And then I'm actually going to send out to, if you're on my private email list, I'll send you out the list to where you can get some of those. Uh, kind of a cool uh, discovery there. Yeah, I see why I didn't pay attention to it the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've been waiting to use that one all night, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> So I, did I have flip. never poached. In, go ahead. Go ahead. So I, I did flip these potatoes. So I flipped those over. Um, so those those potatoes are still in there baking. So that's kind of what's going on right now. And when you're doing baking, you're kind of set and forget it. So most of the stuff I said I'm doing today besides the aioli uh, is really set or forget it. The fish is going to be quick. The setup was easy. And then the plating was easy. So the, the most time-consuming thing was the prep today. Now, do you have the potatoes? Are they right on the coals? They are right on the coals, yep. You like that. You like you like that. Uh, the, well, it's not a problem with potatoes. You got the aluminum foil protecting you. So I'm 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 on board on team cook on cold this week. On the other weeks, I don't know. And I'll flip it over to Brian here. So it's just Brian right now. Well, I tell you, the greatest, the one cool thing about cooking fish is how quickly it cooks. That is, can you see that? That's okay. the beer battered uh, cod. The shrimp are done. The scallops are almost done. The polenta is almost done. So it's uh, that's one great thing about seafood, man. It doesn't take that long to cook it. Now, Carney's got the hill. The Carney's got the hills there to help him eat. Brian, who's helping you eat this other than your dog? I mean, is is, is you know, Elaine is here, and then my okay. dog is coming over later. Now, uh, uh, Elaine has never comes on camera though. She doesn't. No. She doesn't come out. She's very camera shy. Mm-hmm. All right. Ooh, that's white and flaky. Matt says we need to do a rotisserie show. Matt, were you watching our uh, text messages <laughs> earlier in the week? <laughs> Seriously. That was kind of, uh, yeah, that we, uh, somebody, who found it? Brian, did you find that rotisserie? John did. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I found us a rotisserie that goes on a green egg or goes on a grill. Um, so we're all drooling over it. We're waiting to see who's going to pull the trigger on it. It's like $500 and... I think I could build a whole grill with a thing that moves up and down. But, I mean, the rotisserie cooking is, is awesome. Yeah, I mean, he sniped that out of left field. Yeah, that was pretty good. I, I feel like we have a stalker. I kind of I kind of like it, though. You know what I mean? It's nice to have somebody yeah. who cares. So I'm throwing on right now uh, the peppers. I got the Aloha peppers and the bell pepper on there. Throwing on the onions, kind of brown these up a little bit, get them ready. I'm going to throw the rest of the shallots in there, too. Why not? Garlic. Oh, can't have too much garlic. You can never have too much garlic. And you know what you can never have too much of? Look at this segue. I am a professional. You can never have too much red meat. So one of our sponsors, Red Meat Lovers Club, is based out of sunny South Florida. We are super excited as things open back up for them to have their events. Uh, the Stakesmen, as they're called, they kind of have a yearning for the glorious beast. We're talking red meat. And they also want to develop strong personal and business bonds with each other. Uh, look, we, we, we all exist for gathering and dining and all the things we can't do right now. So we're you know, all antsy to get back together and get back out there. Uh, but every meeting is a curated experience. Um, they have different, you know, they, they pair things up with cigars and everything else. So definitely check them out. They should be coming online pretty soon. Matter of fact, we're going to talk about that a little bit later uh, as we start to get out with some events. But uh, visit Red Meat Lovers Club. So it's rmlclub.com and find out, you know, what's going on in your area. And if nothing's going on in your area, by the way, they're always looking for new stakesmen. They'll actually start driving that process. And, uh, you know, you could, you could be hosting one in your area and, uh, I, I can't wait to wait for those to get cut on back up. And I, I actually talked to Evan yesterday and, uh, they're starting to get some things rolling. Uh, there's some other products that, uh, that Evan's looking at doing on his own, um, separately from red meat lovers club, but yeah, they're starting to ramp stuff up. Um, he's starting to get real creative with some things. Uh, just this past month, I believe they had, I think it might even be this week, uh, that they're hosting a virtual steak event, um, but uh, we'll also be doing some of that stuff, too. So we'll be talking about that. And uh, maybe Red Meat Lovers Club will be getting involved in that. But I did just have a conversation with Evan yesterday. So they're, uh, they're, they're ready to get rolling as soon as they can. Nice.
Brian, you got to be getting close to wrapping up. Yeah, it's. Uh... Whoa, whoa, whoa! By the way, everybody compliment Brian on his awesome camera angle. I feel like we're, it's like a, we noticed that when he set up the camera before we went live, and we're like, "Wow, this is like a real cooking show." That was pure luck. All right, so, so my cedar planks are going to go on now. So if you guys want to take a look here at the, at the bottom, the bottom right, I'll flip it over here to the sizzle cam. I'm going to put these right directly on the fire. And they're going to sit there and cook. Incredibly loud sizzle coming on from these. Very loud. Good. Whew. Man, that's loud. Sizzle's loud. Uh, so you can see just from when I put it on, uh, you're already seeing some steam come up uh, through the cedar. This should create, it's already created a huge aroma. I don't know if you guys can smell the cedar over there. It was like instant. So that'll heat up. What is he doing? What is he doing, Fred? He's whisking. He's whisking, whisking something. Is he making kitchen noises on a cooking show? That's weird. It's How really weird. What are you doing, Brian? I'm whisking the polenta. Oh. By the way, how the how the roles have changed. I'm making just one dish. Brian's making three full meals today. Brian really brought it this week. I think you're in his wheelhouse all of a sudden. I mean, he, he's kind of showing you up a little bit as far as the number of items he's got going. I'm, I'm quite impressed. All right. Practice. So now that you've, wait, now that you've whisked it up, what are you going to do with it? I'm probably going to throw it away because it didn't turn out very nice. So we're just going to have a butter <laughs> post <around. laughs> See? See? Nothing but honesty on this show, people. He did, he could have bluffed his way. He could have said, "Well, I'm going to sous vide it later." Sous vide polenta is outstanding. Uh, you know, they can't all be winners. So polenta and the corn skillet cornbread quiche are the two fails so far in the show. Right. What's the well? I've I. I've never whisked polenta, so um, I'm not an expert on polenta by any means, but uh... oh, wait a minute. Lindsay's in here. Okay. Lindsay says, who, who whisks polenta? I think I've been backed up. There we go. A non-Italian. Wow. I have a delay here when I can see the show there. So she said to slowly stir with a wooden spoon as it begins to stiffen up. Well, I'll have to remember that next time. <laughs> Obviously, McGee's not Italian. She says that is correct. That is very true. All right, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. Put, I'm plating my sea scallops with butter, olive oil, and a little bit of chili garlic. Garlic, chili, sesame oil. All Just a little dab. This cedar smells awesome. If you could cook something, if you took a cigar box and you soaked the entire cigar box, the entire cedar cigar box, could you cook something inside of it? A hundred percent. If you look over here, I have a cigar box that I was going to use um, to do something similar to that. And then last minute I saw and re remembered that I had these, these, this, the box I'm using here, the cedar planks are from my favorite cigar. Um, the Factory Press 2 is my favorite cigar ever. So I had this box, and it's been in my basement. So I ended up using this instead. But my goal was originally was to cook it directly inside of cigar boxes. I see a future show episode. I am going to shut the top here just a little bit to cook the fish before these boards start catching on fire. They're very thin. So I'm going to shut that, and this is going to give it a really strong cedar taste as well. Cole said tamale steamed and soaked cigar box. That's interesting. By the way, I still think I have some of the cigar ice, uh, the cigar tobacco ice cream in the freezer that Cole made. So maybe I'll have some of that for dessert 
tonight. If you watch the grill cam oh. right now, there's a lot of steam coming out of here. This is going to be awesome. Cole, I think you'd have to make a grate on the bottom of the cigar box with just a little bit of liquid in it to get more steam out of it. Because the, although the cedar will release it, but it's going to release it outside too. I wonder if it's just a little bit of water in the bottom with some sort of elevating, you know, like in a cigar box, you get that extra stick when they have it, when it's an odd number of sticks or whatever, or the spacing of it. I wonder if you threw like two of those in the bottom and just elevated the tamale a little bit. Um, that could be really good. So if anyone was curious, these baked potatoes came out freaking perfect. Yeah, no, nobody asked about the baked potatoes. Right. A little shredded radicchio. Beer batter cod, sour cream, green hatch chili sauce. A little sriracha. We have a complete role reversal this week, ladies and gentlemen. You <laughs> witnessed it right here. Absolutely amazing. I can't believe the words that are coming out of his mouth. This is this is this is this is history in the making right here, people. And a little lime juice. So my fish is going to be done here. So we're minute. getting we're getting close to plating. Do we want to do would you rather real quick? Um, I Let's hold off on would you rather for just okay. a moment so I can uh, not get behind and burn this fish. Then we'll go over to would you rather and then we can go to plating. I'm just going to get these potatoes out. I'm going to do this again. Look how this potato came out. You can see the prosciutto on here. It like adhered to the skin. It's awesome. Ooh, nice. Ron, thanks for coming by. Ron says, first five live watcher. Enjoyed He's got to go. Thanks for dropping by, Ron. We appreciate it. Thank you, Thank Ron. Ron. Appreciate you, my friend. All right. We're close to would you rather. Well, it requires you, your attention. Well, I have to run the would you rather. Aren't you guys excited to what I, I do know. this week? I, I am because I don't know what they are. So I always prepare them and I don't, I, you know, I know what they are. So it's not as fun for me, but I kind of, I, I kind of enjoy like not knowing what's coming. All right. So the fish, here you go. You can see how the fish is going, coming along nicely. I'm going to just leave it there for a bit and then we'll pull it off. And we'll go to would you rather. Here we go. Would you rather brought to you by Hacking Gourmet. So our first, would you rather, would you rather breathe underwater or never have to breathe on land again? I'd rather breathe underwater. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean. I'm going with breathe underwater as well. So next <laughs> would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales uh, i'm going fur i'm going scales only because of the summertime yeah I, and, the, and the older i get i think i am actually becoming covered in fur so um i think i've i think i've got that <laughs> i've done that i'm getting way furrier as i get older i'm gonna go with fur myself I'd rather be covered in fur. But then people throw paint at us thinking we got coats. You know, it'd be, it'd be ugly. Let me give you guys the money shot real quick. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Let me that's, go over to Brian real quick. That's a nice quick. presentation. That's nice beautiful, presentation. Brian. All right. The next would you rather. Here we Let go. me take it. Would you rather fresh or salt water? Fresh. For fish? Or salt, salt water. water. Swimming for fish, anything. So, uh, I'm going. I'm going freshwater. I guess. Brian, salt, salt, salt. So I'm glad I put that little, uh, the little box press thing on the bottom there. It really helped control the temperature and the fire here. I'm getting an issue here pulling it off because it's quite hot. That's it. There we go. But you guys want to see how I get my dog to in every flow? Hi. Hi. Sit. Sit. 
And we've got another would you rather. Boom. Two more. Flipper, Free Willy, or Jaws? Jaws. Flipper, Free Willy, Jaws. or Jaws? Jaws. I'm going to go with Flipper. Why? I'm a dolphin guy. They're nice animals. Yeah. Okay. And here's the last would you rather. A very challenging question. Would you rather end the life of one human being or 100 cute baby animals? <laughs> wow, that, that escalated quickly. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to say human just because. Uh, I'm, just I'm, because saying, I'm saying the baby animals because we could probably cook them. I'm yeah. going. I'm going with the baby animals because I'm going to cook those little delicious guys up as soon as I kill them. So there we go. So uh, if you're paying attention to the show, Brian apparently is uh, you it's know never, doesn't like people. I wasn't. You know. Well, that's true. So that was the nice job. Nice, was job, the nice job on the would you rather? Yeah, nice job on thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. All right, so that was Would You Rather. We had a nice, some nice artwork there. It was great. I'm plating right now. The potatoes came out great. Guys, I'm done. I'm going to eat. You guys do what you want to do. This is delicious. Just a, a uh, I'm, I'm kind of grinding through right here, hanging out in the sun with a cigar. You know, I, I'll push through. <laughs> Tracy brought the salmon back in time for the show, and she says, are you going to do? Are you going to cook on the show? I said, no, I'm not going to cook on the show. She goes, oh, you will be cooking salmon. So I know I'm cooking salmon tonight. <laughs> That's happening. My wife and daughter were like, absolutely, you're cooking salmon. All right, so the potato fiesta. Mm. I'm plating over here, so the potato fiesta is getting the peppers getting the peppers put on top with the garlic and cilantro. I'd make a, make a, made a really big mess today. A little cilantro on top. And one item I forgot to put on the fish. I made a huge mess here. What's going on? Someone's got to clean that up. Yeah, I will be. And I'm just going to put a little bit of paprika over the top for color on the fish. I'm not a huge paprika fan, um, so I don't put it on really before. And really the flavor I'm looking to get for it is not a lot. I'm not looking for a ton of flavor from it. I'm really just looking for the color for my plating, for my personal views on it. But here we go. We'll plate the haddock. I like their first couple albums, but after that, I think they really went downhill. <laughs> so, here we go. This is Cigar Box Cedar Salmon with Fiesta Potatoes. Wait, is that, a, is that a wood butcher block with little handles on it? This is a wood butcher block with handles and a juice groove. Fred, oh. is that handles or juice groove? Because mine didn't. Uh, no, I did, I did not have handles or a juice group. I think he knows people. I must know somebody. <laughs> and I got the bit. I got not really a whole lot of plating going on here. It was just a pile of potatoes. It's going to be delicious. And uh, that's my dish. So we both finished that beforehand. Looks... Oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't put any of this aioli on it. So I'm just going to serve that on oh, the side. There we go. Now I'm serve we were, that we on were the four side. minutes ahead, and that, now we're going to be 20 minutes late because the aioli is going to come out. Yep. Because we got to hear about the history of aioli, how it was That's made. Right. That's right. <laughs> I mean, heaven forbid we well, be how, educational. Yeah. Heaven forbid we find out that you know aioli was invented in Maine, and only Maine aioli is the best. You know, something like that. You know, locally sourced aioli. Aioli. You guys are jerks. <laughs> I hope you oh. I hope you enjoy your microwave dinner when you go to when you go to <laughs> Brian's place, Fred. Uh, I don't know. I've seen him cook enough. I'm looking forward to it. I've actually had yeah, Brian's steak. Fred when he gets I used to I used to make fun of his sous vide steaks till I had one. Then I could no longer make fun of them. 
I think I think this might have been our smoothest show ever, guys. I think Could so. be. Could be. We're grading on a curve, though, technically. So, I mean, it really did. The benchmark was not that high. Um, but, you know, hey, I'll, we'll, we'll take it. We'll run with it. So, in other words, we're just going to do seafood from now on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Somehow I just ruined, took us all off the screen. There we go. Oh, there's all sorts of cool stuff happening right now. Was that right after you said this is our smoothest show ever? Yeah, well, you know what? I'm, I'm taking this opportunity yeah. to uh, to test some stuff live here that we don't normally have. So right now, I'm up on the screen. I've got you, Brian, and little screens over the top of my grill. This is awesome. So this is some live stuff I never get to get to try here. And uh, let's we got some more comments. Lindsay said, "One human, no question." <laughs> So Brian, <laughs> Brian's partner in crime. I knew somebody would take my side. Take my side. Danny, Danny's going to, uh, Danny's killing people too. Yeah. And, uh, and Susan, um, Mama Tobacco, Mama Tobacco says, no, not, uh, not one baby animal. Um, so I'm going to be down at the tobacco estates this weekend with her family. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that we, uh, that no baby animals are harmed on their property. And uh, Cole wants veal. Cole wants veal. We, we, we learned a lot about our listeners on that last question, too. That's, that's good to know where everybody stands. I, mean, I know there's definitely a few people. I'm going to take it easy on Brian. Uh, you know, the, the harder time I give him, the easier I think it might be for him to pick that one person. Um, you, know, gotta, <laughs> you, you and I, Fred, have to go out and actually find 100 baby animals. So that, that's right, a challenge. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. I'm looking at one of possibly two targets. It's real easy. Yeah, you just yep. got to open up your Facebook feed. It wouldn't take long. No. Well, this look. is a this is a perfect time. Oh, Cole, of course, I'm an idiot. Um, Cole says baby cows, of course, veal, baby oh, cows, uh, kill a hundred of them. So this is a perfect time to announce um, on September 24th, uh, in conjunction with uh, Tobacco Leaf in Jessup, Maryland, outside of Washington, D.C., uh, Hacking Gourmet uh, and La Florida Minicana Cigars and Wood Butcher uh, will be doing uh, the Hacking Gourmet's first uh, in-store virtual uh, cooking event. Uh, what this will be is similar to what we did with Hack It with Carney, only on another scale. Uh, consumers uh, will have the opportunity to buy cigars from uh, Tobacco Leaf Jessup, uh, their store is open, so we'll be broadcasting on Sept 20, uh, September 24th uh, to their location. Uh, and they're, uh, in conjunction, we'll be announcing in the next few weeks one of our meat purveyors. Uh, the people that purchase that now have the opportunity, will have the opportunity uh, to buy on HackingGourmet.com uh, one of our meat packages of the meal that we'll be preparing. Um, so uh, that, that uh, opportunity will come with the purchase of cigars from them um, or from purchasing the meat package on HackingGourmet.com. So we'll talk more about that um, in September. Uh, but that's really exciting. Uh, we're looking at doing... Uh, some more events uh, with that with uh, Crown Heads um, as well and, and, and LFD and Crown Heads, uh, but it'll be including all of our sponsors and all of the people on the show. Uh, but our first event with that will be on September 24th with Tobacco Leaf and Jessup, and we'll provide more details um, over the coming weeks with that. But we're really excited for that, and uh, that should be a great time um, and a really unique way to enhance uh, the experiences that we've had uh, here and uh, to bring you know fun, ex fun special culinary experiences to, uh, to the cigar world. Nice. Brian, any final thoughts before we close up the show? I'm just saving this butter poach. I just turned it into a shrimp cocktail. Screw the oh, polenta. Okay. There I, you uh, go. Shrimp cocktail. There we go. Nice. Hey, one thing, when you do get to Texas, think about what you want to cook. We can definitely do it here, or we could do, at least for myself, uh, we could do the first uh, mobile uh, show. And there we go. It do it somewhere else too so either way i'm good let's do it let's let's do mobile all right well uh thanks everybody for joining us over the coming weeks and months we'll continue to add and improve which is not hard to do innovative ways um you know for you guys to be part of the experience in september we're launching a live virtual steak event that john just talked about Wood Butcher Main, LFD, Crown Heads coming to premium cigar retailers. Uh, the first one it was mentioned was Tobacco Leaf in Jessup, Maryland on September 24th. Uh, stay tuned to our pages on details on how to participate. 
We'll be back live on Labor Day, September 7th for a special Labor Day live event at 5 p.m. Eastern featuring the Wood Butcher himself. He's finally going to show up. Aaron Smith yes. uh, is going to be here. And we're going to learn a little bit, more, a lot more about the boards, which I'm, I'm actually really curious to, you know, actually, you know, kind of meet them and, and find out the details behind that. In the meantime, you can follow us and view all episodes. You can go back and even watch the train wreck episodes on demand on YouTube. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram, Hacking Gourmet, and on the web, HackingGourmet.com, where all the episodes, the top list, ingredients are featured, uh, recipe sections coming soon as well. And uh, that's it. We'll, we'll see you guys in about, uh, I guess, 14 days from now. Sweet. See you on yeah. Labor Day, Wood Butcher. Thank you. Great dish, by the way, Brian. Food looked great today. Thank, thank Good you. Good stuff, guys. guys.